and jump in, not jump, but jump in. I want us to celebrate two things. One, we have someone seen publicly for the first time ever. So we want to celebrate that on worship, and that can be a scary thing, as well as someone who played an instrument for the first time publicly, again, ever, tonight. And if I know firsthand, that can be nerve-wracking, but especially when you're in front of your peers. So can we just go ahead and celebrate? <laughs> is Christ. And because without him, it would mean nothing. It would just be another activity. And so let everything that we do be done with Christ in mind. Now, as you can see, we're in our new series called Purpose. And simply what that means is, I know y'all probably have heard that online, social media, all the good things. Oh, my purpose. Let me find my purpose. My purpose in life. But when you really just look at the main definition when you look at it as a noun, it just means the reason. When you look at it as a verb, meaning action, it means the intent. Now, we can't find our reason and set our intention without first seeking. And so we need to seek. And so when I came up, you know, trying to figure out, okay, there's so many things about purpose. That's such a broad term. Like, what, what, what do we need to do? I'm like, you know what, let me find some ways to let it resonate with you guys, the students, to where you can remember. And so we're going to remember it by seek, and then we're going to break it down. Before we do that, let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us to come together in your name. Lord, I just want to thank you for each and every student that is here on today, Lord God. Lord, I ask that they remember that they are chosen, they are loved, and that they're able to grab one Jim, tonight with the message. We trust you. We thank you. Amen. All right. So the first letter in seek is S. Spend time with God, y'all. We got to spend time with God. At the end of the day, if you're walking around, navigating life, walking your hallways, and you're like, oh, what's my purpose in life? Oh, you know, sometimes I can hear God but right now I can't hear him. Ugh, he's not speaking. I want to warn you, a lot of times when we think, especially when we are familiar with God's voice and how he speaks to us, when we feel that we can't hear him, my question to you would be, when was the last time you spent time with him? When was the last time that you opened up the Bible? The Bible is such a gift that we have it's an opportunity for the Lord to talk to us, for him to communicate with us. And yes, please take notes if you need to take notes. And it's also on the app, on the NCC app. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. I understand Especially, you know, growing up, it can be hard. 
It can be hard to get into the habit of reading the word. That's a spiritual discipline. But that's the key. It's a discipline. There was something that we talked about um, in staff today, this morning. And we were talking about spiritual disciplines. And it made me think of a time when, you know, growing up, especially for those that are like my dancers or if you're like in cheer, we don't really say they're dancers, but you know. Um, but you always want to strive for some splits. That's the, like one of the goals, right? And I remember, I'm like, oh, they're the flexible one. Oh, they're the ones great at turns. Oh, everyone had their thing that they were good at. But I knew I needed the splits, especially for this one dance. We really needed the splits. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put in the work no matter what. I'm going to get close. I don't care. I'm, I'm going to figure it out. And every day I stretched. I made sure because I heard my teacher's voices. Well, if you don't put in the work, if you stop dancing, if you don't stretch, we know. We know. And so I made sure I put in the work. I stretch, I stretch, I stretch, little by little. I got further and further, and finally I got it. Then when I, once I got it, I realized, oh, you got to keep that up. You better keep on stretching, stretching, stretching <laughs> in order to be able to continue to fulfill and to succeed in that split. And that's the same way with spiritual disciplines, y'all. When we say read the Bible and read the word, we're not saying it just because. You have to put in the work just a little bit of time. There's Bible apps on your phone. If you don't have a phone, your phone's always broken or lost, ask us for a Bible. We can get you a Bible. But we want you to take that first step. Just take that first step. It takes effort. Because, again, he is the word. And let me continue to illustrate why it's so important. John 20, 30 to 31 says, the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Now listen, John is addressing something in this moment. Right before those verses written, it's about Jesus' resurrection, and the Lord already knew how his disciples were. He already knew how his followers were. Jesus was already, he was making miracles happen, doing the thing, you know. He had warned them about his death, all the things, right? But he also knew they're going to need some evidence when I come back. They're going to need to see some more signs and wonders. And then John is like, you know what? Let me write this down. Because if we need some evidence, the people behind us, they're going to need some evidence too. We are human. We like to know things. We want to have evidence of things. Seeing is believing for, for a lot of us. And the gift about the word, y'all, there's so many different books in the Bible. Not just to tell us stories about people, but it points us back to God's promise, and it teaches us lessons, and it allows us to have an intimate, one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. And another reason why we say spend time in the word is because you can't take everything that whoever is up here is saying as law. You have to dig in for yourself so that he can speak to you directly. Now, after S comes E. Now that we know we need to spend time with God, we need to now under evaluate why. Why do we do the things we do? Why? Are we where we are? A lot of times, we are like, ugh. You know, we, we, we get into a position, we're doing something, and we're just like, ugh. Uh, you know, you're just doing the thing. And someone will be like, well, well, what you doing? I don't know. I just know I need to do this. This is what I do all the time. And you forget the, the reason behind it. You forget the why behind it. And that's a dangerous thing, y'all. Y'all got to remember why you're doing what you're doing. You may also wonder, well, why am I where I'm at? My question to you would be, why not? Why not you? In Jeremiah 29, 
11 through 14, he's addressing the Israelites that were exiled. And what that means really just that they were banned, okay? They were banned from their homeland. They were losing hope. They needed a word of hope. And they had to be reminded that they were God's children. Once you accept God as your Lord and Savior, you're saying, I'm his child. I'm his ambassador. I'm his representative. So no matter where you go, no matter what classroom you're in, no matter what school you're at, no matter what job you're at, because some of y'all are working, there's a reason why you're there. There are moments where, yeah, it might be hard, it may be frustrating, but just because you are banned from, you know, your homeland or whatever, remember, God is with you wherever you go. He's where you are. There are times, I remember, there was, um, and trust me, I, listen, I've been around some people, all right? And I'll be like, ooh, Lord. And I remember there was one time, and it was at the start of COVID, trying to shift things around at the dance studio, trying to figure out, you know, and my boss was, she was just like, Brie, you're with me. Oh, my God, you're, you're still with me. And I remember there was one night in particular that we were talking to each other, and she like we opened up and she knew that I was really plugged in a church and all the things but she shared with me how she was you know living and it was really like she was getting distracted and it was all about the business and you know money and all that and she was getting tired and she was getting worn but after our conversation she was then start sending me messages about her devotionals sending me messages about you know, oh, I went to Bible study. Oh, you know, I had my time of worship. And it was in that moment that I had to reflect, oh, God, that's why you put me there. So I can be a light to someone who can't see the light right now. I'm your representative where I go, no matter the space. And that's the same for you guys. You are an ambassador of Christ. Now, you may, I also want you to make sure that where you are right now, remind yourself, especially when you're, again, you feel like you're going through the emotions <laughs> and you're still trying to navigate and figure things out. You are where you are right now for a reason and for a purpose. And in its alignment with God's overall promise and design. You are in that classroom for a reason. You are in your family for a reason. Because some of y'all, I know, sometimes it can be hard. You're like, ugh. But there's a reason for it. You have that special gift. There's no one else like you. Only you are like you. Next, after we figure out our why, we then have to evaluate, do we have any, any distractions? Now I want you to go ahead and... Raise your hand if, if this fits you. Well, maybe not. Maybe it might embarrass you. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But just think about it. Just think about it. Maybe you're someone who says, man, you know, if I wasn't so tired, man, you know, I'll hop on that Zoom call for groups. But, you know, I'm so tired. Or, man, you know, I have practice on Wednesdays. But if I didn't have practice... I'd come to NYC. Oh, yeah, I'm calling y'all out. I'm doing it. We have to be careful with distractions. A lot of times, distractions are excuses. And that's not going to help continue to build up our relationship with God. It's not going to help us continue to strengthen our spiritual disciplines when we continuously focus on the distractions and not focus on him. Now, the problem with that, you guys, when we're not um, focusing on him and we're focused on distractions, that is when anxiety comes in, that's when worry comes in, and that's when the enemy loves to attack us and fill our heads with lies, and then we operate from a place of weakness. 
So again, evaluate your distractions. What is keeping you from moving forward in your purpose? And y'all, I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking to myself, okay? I have to remind myself of these things as well. Mark 4.19 says, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire of other things, so no fruit is produced. Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says, so don't worry about these things. Say, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God. Ooh, there, there, there goes that word, seek. It says it. Above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So my question to y'all is, are you putting God first? When you're making a decision, do you go to him first? Or are you treating him like a, a spare tire? Is he your plan B instead of your plan A? I want y'all to really think about that and meditate on that. And last but not least, we already spelled C. Now for the K. We got to keep our eyes on God, y'all. We got to keep our eyes on him. Again, when we allow distractions to come in, that's when doubt creeps in. And we can't let that happen. Matthew 14, 29 through, I mean, 28 to 31. This is a story about Peter. You may have heard of it, but we're going to talk about it and read about it. It says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. Walking on the water, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked in the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? We need to learn from Peter and keep our eyes on God. I can give you a nice example. It's a real story. If you were here a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday, we had our um, discussion about singleness. And I mentioned a fun fact. I was like, oh, I walked on fire. And some of y'all know about it and some of you may not. Well, I'm going to tell you. So I was at this thing and one of the exercises was to walk on fire. And we're all doing it. We're like, whoa, yeah, yeah, we're walking on fire. And I'm, I, you know, I'm going, I'm focused. I'm like, all right. So I walk on the fire. But then my mom was like, Bree, you walking on fire. And as soon as that happened, I was like, whoa, it burns. And then I had to re-trigger again and be like, uh-uh, I can't, uh-uh, I'm focused. I got to keep focusing on where I'm going so I wouldn't feel it. Again, sometimes when we allow outside things and distractions that are not of God, take away our focus from him, we may get burned. We may get hurt. We may make things harder for ourselves because we're not allowing him to be our focus. We're not allowing him to be at the center of our life. So again, when it comes to you walking in your purpose and living in your purpose, you have to remember the times that you're able to know, oh, this is a God thing and not a me thing, is because you're spending that time with him. You're allowing the word to transform your spirit your heart and your decisions. You're evaluating your why. 
So when times are difficult or you're in a certain place that may seem dry to you, maybe you're the water that it needs. And that's another reason why you need to evaluate any distractions. Because again, the enemy wants to come and get you off your course. And you have to, again, keep your eye. But as a body of church, we got to keep our eyes on God to help build up his kingdom. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. I want to provide the opportunity for anyone who has never taken that step to say, I want to be with God. I want to walk in purpose. I want to walk in truth. I want to walk knowing that I'm not alone. I want to walk in community. I want to walk in love. I want to give you the opportunity to join his family because he's right here. He's right here with you. You're not too far from him. You don't have to be perfect because none of us are perfect. He is our strength when we are weak. He is the one that we can go to for direction. And so I want to provide that opportunity for you to accept him into your heart and allow him to just transform you. So with every head bowed and eye closed, we want to all say this together, whether it's your first time or your 100th time. Say, Jesus, I come to you. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Savior of my life. Give me a brand new start. I want to walk with you. I want to fulfill my purpose with you. In Jesus' name, I love you. Show me the way. Amen. And so we want to go ahead and celebrate anyone who said that prayer for the first time. If you're watching online and you said that prayer for the first time, please message us because we want to walk alongside you. And if you're here today and you said that prayer for the first time and you've never, you know, gone through what it means to walk through that road of salvation and what, what's my next step, we don't want you to just leave out of here without any resources or tools. So make sure that you, you know, talk to one of our leaders, talk to one of our adult leaders. And then some of you know some of our student leaders as well, and they're equipped to do to walk you through that as well. So make sure you talk to them. Before I get out of here, though, I need to leave you with an action item. I'm only leaving you with one action item, y'all. And that is to set aside five minutes every day this week to spend time with God. For those of you who like your phones, set an alarm. Set an alarm that when you know, oh, if I need to wake up five minutes early, or I wouldn't even tell you to wake up five minutes early because I don't like getting up early myself. If you know there's a certain time where it's more quiet for your activity in your life, put in, put your timer on for that. And again, just spend at least five minutes with them. And if again, if you need to know how to download the Bible app, talk to one of the leaders. If you need an actual physical Bible, talk to one of the leaders. All right? And before we get to the fun stuff, I'm going to pray one more prayer for everybody. And then we're going to get to some more fun stuff. Lord, I just want to thank you again for each and every person that's here on today. Those that had the heart and desire to come but couldn't make it, Lord God, for whatever reason, let them feel your presence, let them feel your comfort, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you continue 
to just cover each of these students that are here today, protect them, give them the spirit of peace and sound mind. Let them be the light in the areas of darkness and just allow them to continue to know that you're with them every step of the way and let them walk confidently knowing that you're with them. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen.